upon the water. He could make the blind man see that he conjured white weddings and did cooks with fish and bread. That he talked of being born again and raised people from the dead. Who spoke of being free? He was followed by the masses on the shores of Galilee. He spoke out against corruption and he bowed to no decree. And they proved his strength and power, so they nailed him to the tree. Church on this Pentecost weekend. Our call to worship today comes from uh, Psalm 66, verses 1 and 5. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Come and see the works of God, who is awesome in his deeds toward the sons of men. We open this service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's stand as we join in singing together our opening song of praise. Mighty to save. Thank you. 
among them round about, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and lo, they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and pray, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, that you may come to life. I will put sinews on you, and make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, that you may come alive, and you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, sinews were on them, and flesh grew, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may come to life. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is perished. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you will come to life, and I will, I will place you on your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. The gradual, Alleluia, Alleluia, you send forth your spirit. They are created and you renew the face of the earth. Alleluia. 
Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Hallelujah. for real. 
rehab, and his daughter tell, Karen tells me he is doing, he's doing much better. Bob Reef actually got the collar off, his neck is healing, and now he needs to regain some strength so he can go back home to the waters with Gladys. So be praying for Bob's strengthening as well. Prayers for Lizzie Savitsky, who had to recently had ankle surgery. You see all the names of the people there. In the prayers for healing and recovery section, I do want to highlight Kimmy Kinlan. She did have uh, another successful step towards getting onto the lung transplant list, but that's far from, they're far from done. There are a couple more steps that she needs to get through, some more testing. So do be praising God for successful completion of a couple good steps for Kim, but there's a uh, Pray for continued success as she's working towards getting on that transplant list. And pray for Clay, her dear husband, who is not only serving as our council vice president, but trying to minister faithfully to his wife. And he was going to resign from council, and she said, no, you're not. <laughs> she made him stay on council. So good for Kimmy. Uh, but pray for Kim and Clay. They're just walking through this together by the grace of God. Uh, and you see all the other people there. Uh, the people who are dealing with cancer, um, including um, several of the people on that list there. There's Avery Stocker, who's only two years old and recovering from a neuroblastoma. Gene Hirschberger, though, especially, uh, was talking to his doctor, and his doctor said, you know, we've, we've got to stop the cancer treatments. It's in your lungs, it's in your pelvis, it's in your spine. And the Gene said, so you're telling me I'm on my way out, huh? doctor said, yeah, pretty much. Gene is unafraid. There's not a bit of fear in that man. He's got his pin, his Ruth Fritz 75th anniversary pin. He says, ready to be put on my jacket and my casket. That's where he puts that thing. And uh, just if you have a chance to send Gene Hirschberger a card, please do that. He's been such an important part of this church. His wife, Sue, is the one who started our preschool that has now been going for all these years. So just a faithful member of this church since the 1950s, somewhere in the 1950s. So praise, we praise God for Gene and all these people. Remember, uh, John Coldsmith is on hospice care. And yeah, there's Gene. I was wondering, like, where's Gene in the prayers for healing and recovery section? He's, on the, he's in the hospice care section now. Uh, and as is Andy Kovac, be praying for him as he continues to decline as well. His family pours out their support and, and help on, uh, on him. We did have a, a memorial service today over at Paul Henny Funeral Home for Bill Dimmick. I don't know if anybody knew Bill. He was not a member of this church, but he did used to repair bicycles and drop them off for Pastor Dennis to give out to needy children in the area years ago. So he had that little connection with our church and uh, had his service today. They were looking for a Lutheran pastor, and they, the funeral home called me up and said, would you? And I said, okay. So a wonderful family, and also a, a, a U.S. Army veteran. Uh, and also to express your condolences to Eric Langkamp, his sister, Carolyn Hardinger, passed away. So if you know Eric, or even if you don't know Eric, send him a card, let him know you're thinking about him, and her memorial service, her funeral service, will be on Monday over at Jefferson Memorial. Is that where that will be? So they're at the cemetery. They have the chapel there. And I believe that's where our memorial service will be. But if you have any questions, give a, a call to the church office to confirm that. There's a lot going on this Sunday. It is Pentecost. It is Confirmation Sunday. It's the first Sunday of our new member class. And look at the list of the Confirmation students there uh, and be praying for them. They have already completed two years of Confirmation homework and exams. And they're going to be confirming the faith into which they were baptized, most of them when they were infants. Tomorrow at the 11 o'clock service, they'll be standing up before the con congregation and confirming that that is the faith to which they are still holding by the grace of God. So special thanks to all those who've helped to teach them, including Amanda Kruger, Susan Hughes, and Mary Wagner, and their parents. Uh, there's one sitting over there, uh, who, not parents of one of these, but Gabe Bostaff is one of our junior confirmation students, and his mom has helped in the classroom as well. So parents do a lot of work to help their kids get through the confirmation uh, service. And hope you, if those of you who will be here tomorrow stay after the 11 o'clock service, there will be a, 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 a cake reception for them. If you look at the top of page 20 in the announcement section, you can see there that the church council has agreed to cover airfare, meals, registration, and hotel expenses for up to six people from Ruth Frit, 
to go out to the annual conference. My family and I are going out, but we don't count towards those numbers. So I think there are at least four spots left if anyone would like to go out to conference uh, coming up June 12th through the 15th. Also, again, as I mentioned, we have a new member class starting tomorrow that will be up in the upper room. We have somewhere from 11 to 13 people that will be wanting to join our church. And many current Ruth Frith members will be attending that class. You're all obviously welcome to attend if you'll be here tomorrow. And then also tomorrow you can see on the top of page 22 the announcements about the Sunday school class in here taught by Mason Mitchell. And one in the conference room on discipleship that will be taught by Colton Cox. This is part of the point of our church body's Bible college. The students from our churches would go to the Bible college and receive this amazing training and then go back to the congregations that they came from and teach, use the material that they've learned there to come here and teach. So Mason will be doing that here in this room tomorrow and Colton Cox, both Bible college graduates, teaching in the conference room. So those are all the announcements that I have for you at this time, except to remind you, this is a Holy Communion service. You don't have to be a member of Ruthburg Lutheran Church to partake of Holy Communion. Just ask that you be a baptized believer in Jesus Christ of confirmation age, believing right along with us exactly what God's Word says about Holy Communion. He says, this is my body, this is my blood, for the forgiveness of your sins. And if you're believing that along with us, you may participate in Holy Communion. Yes, uh, for those of you who are going to be attending the new member class, and it's going to be upstairs, you'll see the signage pointing to where the new member class will be located. Thank you for reminding me of that, Lori. Those are all the announcements I have for you. Let's all stand together and join in singing our sermon song on page 10, Counting My Blessings.
understanding and respect for God's word as I read in Jesus' name what Ezekiel did here after God told him to prophesy or speak God's word over those bones in Ezekiel 37, 7. Ezekiel says, I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Use us to prophesy like Ezekiel, like your disciples at Pentecost. Use us. Use Ruthford's confirmants to speak your word in this dark world. Speaking of your mighty deeds, help us, Lord, as you helped Ezekiel and your disciples not to fear the world, but to obey you and prophesy whether the world likes it, listens or not. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I thank especially Mark Arnold for coming and seeing me right before this and singing them bones, them bones. And get <laughs> not actually, I'd gotten all the way through this sermon, writing it up without even thinking of that song one time. So thank you, Mark. <laughs> and I was, Rory, smiling as you were singing that sermon hymn because um, it demonstrates the attitude of God's people. We are going to run out. Gene Hirschberg are facing that now. Yes, we're going to run out of time. But I'll just keep counting my blessings. And we face many difficulties in life. Our compromands are going to. Some people, as I'll mention in my sermon here, really fear for them. They're afraid for their children and their grandchildren and what they're going to face in this world. And we hope that they'll be tough and strong by God's grace like Gene. And just keep counting their blessings no matter what they face. You can bring the dead to life. I do not pity Ruthford's confirmation students. When I first considered Ruthford's, many people told me not to come here. <laughs> oh, they'd say, Ruthford used to get 700 people on Sundays, and now it gets maybe 250 or 300. That's a bad trajectory. You should go somewhere else. So I said, oh, okay, so if I discern <laughs> that God's calling me to go to Ruthford, should I tell God that, nah, I'm not going to go there because you told me not to? <laughs> By God's grace, Aaron, the kids and I, we did discern God's call to come here and return to our beloved Ruthford, here to prophesy. Praise God. And yes, Ruthford was once larger in the 1960s. 73% of Americans were members of a church. And today it's 50, if that. That was 2018. I'm saying today. Those numbers are already six years old. People today, especially those who remember the 1960s, they fear the apparent decline of Christianity these past 60 years, and they pity young Christians like our confirmands and fear for them, for their future. I don't pity them. Like Ezekiel, God put them here now for a reason. And he has prepared them. And I'm not naive about the challenges, either of being a faithful Ruthford pastor or a faithful Christian today. Being disliked by people for speaking the truth about sin, being called a bigot. Maybe there are more challenges today than there were in the 1960s in some ways, but I don't pity nor am I afraid for our confirmands or any of my kids. They're here now for a reason, and God knows why. He put us, us here now, mostly to do the same thing Ezekiel did in that valley with all the dry bones. What God's church did at Pentecost there in Acts 2, to prophesy, to speak God's word, to speak of the mighty deeds of God. That's what they were speaking in the tongues that they were hearing. They heard them speaking of the mighty deeds of God, like you already did with the Apostles' Creed today. That's what you're here to do, to tell people all those things. Praise God that you just did it. And you're supposed to do that whether people like it or not. <laughs> right? Uh, Ezekiel, he lived 2,615 years ago. And that's one of my favorite books in Scripture. Because after years of defying God, ignoring his word, and worshiping false gods, idols, God had sent the Babylonians to punish Israel. And the Babylonians crushed Jerusalem, and Ezekiel and thousands of Israelites were taken prisoner. And... They weren't getting 700 people in their church either after that because the temple was gone. The temple, their homes, everything they had gone. And right in the middle of that misery, 
God put Ezekiel. And Ezekiel did not pity himself or seek anyone's pity. I love what God told Ezekiel to do. Read Ezekiel 2. It's only 10 verses long. It's my favorite chapter, I think, in the entire book. God said there in Ezekiel 2 that he sent Ezekiel to a stubborn people. He told Ezekiel, don't fear them or their words. Speak my words to them whether they listen or not. They are stubborn and rebellious. Don't pity our compromise. Or your kids or your grandkids. Yes, our culture is increasingly rebelling against God. Anybody with eyes can see that. Yes, God's judgment will come due for those things. And likely, there are unpleasant days ahead, especially for the Ezekiels, for faithful disciples of Jesus who courageously speak the truth, which our culture increasingly hates. Expect it. If you speak God's word faithfully, prophesy today, many will hate it, and they'll hate you too. Faithfulness to God has earthly consequences, and if you're afraid of that, and desperate to avoid earthly suffering, then you're not a disciple of Jesus Christ. I don't pity our confirmands, and one of them is my own son, because they belong to God. He has prepared them. He sent them here now for his purpose. I'm excited for them. Yes, many in our culture actually hate the truths that our confirmands have studied these past two years have been taught by people like Sue and me. Hate their Christian faith. Our culture hates that, that, that faith, which they will confirm at the 11 o'clock service tomorrow. So what? Did the world's hatred stop Ezekiel? from prophesying. <laughs> Did it shut him up? <laughs> May God grant our confirmants Ezekiel's courage and faithfulness, the courage and faithfulness of Pentecost, to speak the truth, whether spiritually dead, dry people like it or not. God's rebellious here by people here by Ezekiel 37. As I said, they were prisoners. They'd seen their loved ones killed. They'd lost their every earthly possession, lost the temple. Actually, I don't know if the temple had been crushed yet at this time. They'd certainly been taken away from the temple, but the Babylonians would later go back and crush it. Spiritually, though, they were, God's people, Israel, a valley of dry bones, dead bones. And so God sent Ezekiel, and Ezekiel said, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones, spiritually dry dead. God's people in Babylon, they were discouraged, defeated, and it was all their own fault. And Ezekiel said that God caused him to pass among the dry bones, round about, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and lo, they were very dry. In the 1960s, this neighborhood here around Ruthven was full of churchgoers. You knock on one of these doors, and you were bound to run into someone who was either a member of Ruthven or they were a member of some other church. But you knock on those doors today, and if you ask them if they go to church, you may hear from any of them, church, why would I do that? They don't even know what you're talking about, some of these people. So, Ruthford's a mission, Ruthford Acres is a mission field again, as it was originally. Even some who attend Ruthford do embrace unbiblical things. They don't like hearing God's truth. And Ezekiel said that God asked him, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel answered, O Lord God, you know. Can the dead be raised? Christians, yeah, you know the answer to that. So do our confirmation students, thanks be to God. The dead can be raised to life. It's the whole point of Ezekiel's vision here. The reason that you and our confirmands are here, where we are now, today. Can the dead be raised by the power of God's word and spirit? Like Ezekiel, speaking God's word, you can bring the dead to life. God told Ezekiel, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, that you may come to life. I will put sinews, or muscle and tendons, on you, make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, that you may come alive, and you will know that I am the Lord. In that verse, that's the 57th time in the book of Ezekiel that, that God has used that phrase. The whole point of Ezekiel's and our existence, the point of Pentecost, 
of the church, that people will know that he is the Lord. God is not concerned about our faith, whether or not people know us. But he does, he is concerned about whether they know him, that he is the Lord. And that's why he sent us, that's why he sent our confirmands, that's why he sent Ezekiel here, that people would know that he is the Lord. Same purpose God has for us, it's the same purpose he had for Ezekiel and for his disciples at Pentecost, that spiritually dead people would hear his word and live. And what did Ezekiel do? Same thing God sent us to do. Whether people like it or not, Ezekiel said, I prophesied, and as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked, and behold, sinews were on them, and flesh grew, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. We and our confirmands exist to do as God commands us, not just the things that we want. Yes, we will offend spiritually dead people. But when God's people speak his word faithfully, it saves, it works miracles. Praise God. And we in Ezekiel, we plant the seeds, speaking God's word as he commanded us, and God works the miracles. We plant, God causes the growth, and brings spiritually dead people to life. God told Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. And say to the breath, thus says the Lord, just says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they come to life. So I prophesied, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life, and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Raise your hand here if you've ever taught Sunday school. Wow, look at all the Sunday school teachers. Raise your hand if you've ever taught somebody what God's word says about something. Everyone in this room has done that. That's prophesying. Speaking God's word faithfully to people. Thank you, Ezekiels. That's why I don't pity our confirmants. That same power from Ezekiel's day still works today. And I have seen it. God's word bringing spiritually dead people to life. People like these who once hated God's word. These people were rebels against God. Spiritually dead. Slain by their own disbelief. That's how they were slain by their own rejection of God, defying God, wandering towards eternal destruction, then they encounter God's word. I've seen people encounter God's word in Ezekiel's here at Ruthred. I did, and have been baptized and brought to life here, like these dead dry bones in Ezekiel's vision. God's word still does that, and it's not going to stop doing that, no matter how old our confirmation <laughs> students get, no matter how far down south the culture continues to drop. God's word is... It's still going to be there for them. And God will still have the same purpose for them. Spoken by Ezekiel 2,615 years ago, or today by you, or by our confirmands 40, 50 years from now. Same power. Still at Ruth for today, Ezekiel's speak. God told Ezekiel, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is perished. We're completely cut off. Sounds like many Christians today. Oh, it's hopeless. How could God love us? I pity my children and grandchildren. I, I fear for their future. Same warnings I heard about coming to Ruth for years ago. Oh, it's dry. It's perishing. Not like it once was. Ooh. But then God told Ezekiel, Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, my people. For the 58th time in the book of Ezekiel, I think it gets to 68 or 81, somewhere in between there times that he says that. God says, then you will know that I am the Lord. Fearful people, they look at the world and they see the growing dangers and imperfections. They see the sin, even in the church. Uh, the church is full of sinners, so sometimes they're surprised to see it here. I don't know why. But what do you think happens here when we confess our sins? Yes, the wages of sin is death. Yes, sinners deserve spiritual death. And so we gather here 
in our worship service and we confess our sins together and what do you think happens? We confess our sins and God who is faithful and just forgives our sins. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Why do we overlook that? Maybe it's because every time we get together, we we forget, we confess our sins together, we receive the absolution, and it's just so ordinary to us. We see it happening right in front of our face, and sometimes we miss it. But what do you think happens here at Ruthford in that moment except exactly what Ezekiel saw in this vision? By God's grace, the spiritually dead, raised to life. We see it every Sunday every Saturday service here, and maybe we take it for granted that happens, we're sinners. But remember that here at Ruthford, through his word and sacraments, God brings dead bones to life. He forgives sinners, that's us, that we may know that he is the Lord, that's the point. And we do take it for granted, unlike Israel and Ezekiel's vision, Americans, we haven't seen our churches and our towns destroyed by an enemy army and been exiled or seen our loved ones killed right before our eyes and then been taken away to a foreign land. So maybe you could say that we're spoiled in some way by comparison. We take a lot of things for granted. And again, that's why I don't pity our confidants. Maybe they will experience harder things than earlier generations of Christians in America have. I don't wish that on them, but even if harder things are ahead, Look at our ancestors. God didn't abandon them. God promised, I will put my spirit within you, and you will come to life, and I will place you on your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. So whatever challenges our confirmants face, God keeps his promises. In their baptism, he put his spirit in them and raised them to life. Whatever they endure, God will bring them hope. They will know that he, the Lord, has spoken, that he's done it. God keeps his word, which they've heard. They've learned his word, have they not? Actually, Sue, our, our course in confirmation is just a refresher. They already knew most of these things before they took the confirmation in the class. God has already poured out his spirit on them. He did it at Pentecost where he created the church. He's poured out his spirit on all who believe in him, poured it out on Ezekiel, pours it out today that we may know that he is the Lord. And knowing that, faithfully prophesying, speaking his word, our confirmands and you can bring the dead to life. And when you do, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.
this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our service for Holy Communion continues there on page 13 in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right, so you say. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, who on the tree of the cross gave salvation to mankind, that from where death arose their life also might rise again, and that he who by a tree once overcame might likewise by a tree be overcome through Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.